What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't remember ever having a satisfactory answer for this question. At different times in my life, I've considered going to culinary school, being an engineer, a doctor, a biologist, and even building guitars professionally. But none of these jobs ever seemed to really make the cut. When I was in high school, I was on the basketball team. I really liked the sport and I felt like I understood sort of intrinsically what the team needed to do, but I could never really make my body do those things. But no matter how hard I tried, I never really felt like I was meeting my full potential. I was never a starter, but I wasn't a bench warmer either. I watched some of my teammates who had this natural ability to run and jump and generally do all the things that I couldn't or that I had to really work hard to do and I would wonder to myself why I was stuck in this rut in the middle of the road. I would talk to my mom about it and she would tell me that they were actually the unlucky ones because unlike them, I had a breadth of things that I was good at. I was in a bunch of clubs, I did sports, I was decently smart, and according to her, all they had was basketball. I was a jack of all trades, which according to her was the pinnacle of a great success in life. Thus began my tumultuous relationship with that identity. This was the beginning of my experience with Jack of All Trades Syndrome. I just cannot keep up with the impossible beauty standards. According to human resources professionals, the optimal way to suck value out of your workforce is to have them be T-shaped. This means that the person has a broad knowledge of a bunch of subjects and a deeper knowledge of their specific skill or profession. I would be what these people would call a dash-shaped person. You know, the top part of the T without that deep knowledge. My issue on a personal level seems to be an overabundance of curiosity, or at least that's the polite way of saying it. I have trouble taking a deep dive into a topic because there are so many other interesting things to learn about. I can't stay on one topic for very long before I get sucked in by a passing interest in something else. This starts to touch on the topic of ADHD, which I'm sure I'll talk about in future videos. When it comes to music, I can't help but compare myself to others. I'm a decent guitarist, but I'm downright sloppy when you compare me with Marissa Paternoster from Screaming Females and I have a decent voice, but I'm nowhere near as great as Haley Williams. I doubt I'll ever reach the level of Adrienne Lenker from Big Thief when it comes to lyric writing. I've started to figure out social media, but when I look at someone like Milwaukee rapper Shlee Berry, whose visuals and social media campaigns are always so amazing, I can't help but feel a little bit envious. Jack of all trades syndrome extends to other areas in my life as well. I'm decently handy around the house, but I would never point at something I made and tell someone because what if they found a flaw in it? And I'm a decent cook, but I get really nervous to make a meal for my friends. I'm a pretty engaging speaker, but I would never volunteer to speak for my group without a script. I've done some pretty good photography in the past, but I would not call myself a photographer, especially in front of other photographers. And in all of these things, all I can see is how far I have to go instead of how far I've come. At its core, I think that Jack of all trades syndrome is really similar to imposter syndrome. I see everyone else doing their thing, and I think that they must have the magic pill. They must have figured out the one thing that you have to do to be the best at what you do. Part of my brain realizes that this is completely made up BS, that most people don't have it figured out and that there is no magic pill. My brain knows there might even be one or two people who look at me and think that I have it all figured out, which is laughable to say the least. But my heart can't seem to grasp the concept. I found that one of the best ways to get rid of the feeling that you're not good enough is to turn your music up loud enough to drown out the voice in your head. It's bad for your ears, but it's probably pretty good for your soul. I don't know, I haven't done the research. I don't think my mom's strategy was right either. I shouldn't have looked at my teammates and thought, 
hey, all they have is basketball. I'm a jack of all trades. Look at all the things I can do. The trick should have been to stop looking at other people altogether. Ultimately, there's no way to look at someone else's life and figure out what struggles they have, what comes easily to them, and what they think their weaknesses are. The only person we can control is ourselves. And when we're looking at ourselves, we need to cut other people completely out of the equation. There will always be someone smarter, faster, taller, more talented. Are we going to let ourselves be bogged down by the fact that among the 7 billion people on the planet, we are not the number one best artist or architect or salesperson or athlete? The trick can't just be to stop comparing yourself to others. How do we start looking at being a jack of all trades as an asset instead of a liability? Maybe I need a change of perspective. It's easy to look at a diverse and shallow skill set and think that it doesn't have much use. But some of the best ideas come from taking the knowledge you have in one area and applying it to another. One of the most reliable ways to innovate is to take knowledge from one area and apply it somewhere else. Musically, this can mean anything from sampling to putting a funky bass line in a country song. Personally, I have a hard time putting a label on my own music. Is it pop? Is it rock? Is it alternative? The answer really is yes. I listen to all sorts of music, and so elements from all of those genres get mixed up into my songs. And I think that it's time that I start looking at my jack-of-all-trades-ness and think of it as a positive thing rather than a propensity to go down rabbit holes. So here are my goals. I want to stop looking at being a jack-of-all-trades as a weakness, and I need to start viewing it as a strength. I need to stop every once in a while and look back at how far I've come rather than comparing myself to others and dwell on how far I have to go. I think this is related to my last goal. I want to find ways to increase my daily motivation to work on my long-term goals without running into discouragement. And I think that a lot of that discouragement comes from comparing myself to other people. So how do you see yourself? Are you a jack of all trades or no? If you are, how do you feel about it? Do you struggle with the same things that I do? If you want to support me, you can listen to my music, and I'll link that below. I'm also part of the music collective Meltwater Pulse. It's a group of artists helping each other create music, and it's a really great opportunity for me. I'll link to that as well. If you want to support me financially, you can't. However, subscribing is free, as is liking the video. If you didn't like it, why are you still watching? And also, give it a thumbs down so that I can be sent into a downward spiral. Before I leave, here are the first five songs from my music on Shuffle. Let's see if you hear any influences in there. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.